Hi, this is Mike from WindowsForum.com. This isn't a Windows software review, but it is a review of an Android application called ESET Mobile Security and Antivirus. Now, this application has already been installed, but basically, this is a mobile security suite for your Android tablet or phone. I'm going to show you a demonstration and review of this product. We've already installed the product and as you can see we have maximum protection here. There's some options on the home screen. There's a help dialog which will tell you exactly how this works. The licensing agreement, uh, the antivirus, the anti-theft system, the SMS and call filter, anti-phishing, security audit settings, and customer care. And uh, of course, some features are not available on tablets that do not support calling and messaging. This, of course, being one of them because it is the Nexus 10 stock from Google. Uh, now, when I go to antivirus, uh, I can do an assortment of things here, but I'm going to go back, and this is usually the screen you'll see. You have a scan level of quick, smart, and deep. The default is smart. A deep scan obviously will scan everything on your device. Quick scan obviously will look at the essentials, and uh, the smart scan will probably look at the areas that would most be affected uh, if you were to have some kind of problem with that device. Uh, the scheduled scan can be set up and uh, this will allow you to set up a time to do scans automatically. However, there is real-time protection built into the software, so this is an extra layer of protection. You have a quarantine in the event that something is found on your system, whether it be rogue software or rootkit, uh, etc. Potentially unwanted application. In fact, you are prompted as to whether or not you want to be part of uh, the early detection program as well as if you want uh, potentially unwanted applications to be detected by the software. Of course, we've said yes to that when we install the software. We have scan logs here. If we find a threat, we look here and we can go back and look at these logs. Uh, we can update the threat database and check the versioning. We also have advanced settings for real-time protection. Now again, we have the ESET Live Grid, which is uh, what we want to participate in here as far as uh, you know having early warning and, and uh, potentially submitting uh, in the wild uh, type of uh, threat. We have real-time protection enabled, which means that uh, if something is resident in memory or starts running arbitrary code or gains root privilege, uh, hopefully this will be detected by the software. We have the threat database auto updates. We can choose when to check for updates. We set it for daily because that makes sense. Um, and then of course we can, as I said before, detect potentially unwanted applications. There's also an option to detect potentially unsafe applications. And we'll just add that. Now the default action, the default resolve action is what do you do when, if a virus is found or malware is found? Um, do you quarantine this or do you remove it? You may want to quarantine it uh, not only to find out what it is, but to report it or submit it uh, to the ESET lab or some other lab. Anti-phishing uh, is excellent here. Uh, now, what this does is uh, if you have a browser installed on your, on your tablet or your phone, which pretty much everyone does, um, you're going to find out uh, if you're on a page that is a phishing page. Now, what a phishing page is, is a, a page that purports to be something it's not. For example, a, a website, uh, you may get an email saying to check your bank account, you click on that email, and all of a sudden you're sent to some uh, rogue website that has nothing to do with your, your bank but looks exactly like it. That would be a phishing attack. And this is now, we see Chrome is supported, but RoboForm 
is not. RoboForm is a password manager, but within the Android environment, it also operates as a web browser, uh, primarily because plugins generally do not run in Chrome or in Mozilla Firefox uh, on Android. So it, it functions as its own web browser uh, and may integrate uh, some functionality of those other web browsers. So, but it's not supported, but that's not a big deal. We go to security audit, and this is something that's very interesting. And I'll go back here and show you the different options. The security audit will show you what applications use paid services. Now, what that means is what applications might cost you money, right? That is interesting. You want to know uh, if you install an application, is this thing going to start trying to charge your Google account or what? And of course, we have Angie's List, uh, Facebook, uh, Fly Delta, which is Delta Airlines, Gesture Search, Google Voice, Hotel Tonight, or Hotel Reservations, Messenger, and Skype. Those will all potentially uh, allow you, uh, you know, the elevation of privilege, in this case, to use your bank account. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Track location. Now, you'd be surprised at how many applications tr actually track your location. This surprised me. Now, a program like Facebook is obviously going to track your location. Uh, not only do they want this information uh, for who knows, we, we won't say why they want that information, but we all know why. It's usually to, uh, you know, sell ads to you and find out what you're doing and create a profile about you. Um, but you'd be surprised what other ones do. Uh, AMC Mobile, which is often, uh, after, te after television shows are premiered, you're often told to run AMC Mobile uh, for the television network. Uh, it actually tracks your location. So does Angry Birds. You don't know why that is. Geico does, <laughs> you know. That's a little scary when you have Geico tracking your location. Oops, I think we just dropped out right here. Huffington Post, you know, movie phone, uh, you know, speed test. Well, we understand why that's to test the speed of your connection. Wikipedia. But let's see Angry Birds. Why would a game designed for kids and some adults like me, why would that demand uh, your location? And what does it do exactly? Well, you'll find out here. Uh, what it exactly does is it requires network access. It will view Wi-Fi connections. Uh, it will approximate your location based on your network. So that's interesting. You know, it wants to know where you are based on your network, probably for analytics or whatever. Huffington Post, same thing. And so you've got that. But more interesting, in my opinion, now we start getting into the really interesting stuff. What reads your identity info? So now we have 48 applications that want to know all about your identity. I've got about 90 apps installed here. 48 of them want to know everything about me and everything on my phone, apparently. Uh, let's look at one that might be nefarious in some way, not to make any accusations, but just, you know, a little bit peculiar. Uh, how about we take a look again at uh, BBC News. What is going on here with BBC News? Okay. Well, this will tell you now, uh, it wants to find accounts on your device, so that's about it. You know, it needs full network access, obviously, and it will prevent the tablet from sleeping. Uh, how about Angry Birds? Are you going to kill us again? Yeah, you know, Angry Birds might have elevation of privilege a little bit too much uh, on Android, if you ask me. But when we go back to the application audit again, because I really want to stress how interesting this is, we have access messages here. So what can access your messages? Obviously, Facebook Messenger is a big culprit. What will it do? Uh, it can directly call phone numbers. It can send text messages. It can receive them. 
it will definitely read them. It will record audio, it will take pictures and video, it will read your call log, it will read all your contacts, it will read your own contact card, it will modify contents of your USB storage, it'll pretty much do everything. It'll even draw over other applications if it wants to. So yeah, you know, Facebook Messenger, that thing, it might as well just have root access to your device at this point, you know. Uh, this is the kind of stuff we give away. So I, I found this to be the most, actually one of the most compelling features uh, of this thing because uh, you, have, you get the sense that it will, you know, it's doing the security audit, but it will also determine if privileges change on an application. You, at least you get that, that you know, uh, idea. So you can also set a security password. This is usually a good idea so that uh, just say your device is stolen, we have the tracking software, uh, and if your device is stolen, nothing bad will happen. Uh, because you have a password here, hopefully you will be able to maybe even recover the device. And of course you have what's called permanent notification. Show the icon in the tray area at all times telling you that the device is protected and you'll see it right there. All right, well, we've gone through antivirus, uh, we've gone through anti-phishing, we've gone through the security audit, and we've gone through the settings. I will show you an example of the scan right here. It's pretty fast uh, using the smart scan. And what's going on here basically is that every single one of the applications which you now know are on my Android device here, you even know what movies I download, uh, they're being scanned. So this will tell you if there's malware installed, if there may be uh, some sort of suspicious uh, activity uh, detected here while the scan is taking place, uh, whether or not this is an application that uh, is a rogue application that somehow made it onto uh, Google Play or if it was downloaded from uh, an external source outside of Google Play for the use of uh, an injection attack or something like that. So what you see here is every application has been scanned and the result is no threats found. This of course then goes into the scan log if something was found, it would likely be quarantined, placed in the quarantine list. Uh, so thanks for watching this part, and stand by, we may be able to check out some of the features of the phone on the Galaxy S3. Okay, so here we have the phone application on the Galaxy S3, and ultimately, we see some of the features that we saw before. For example, antivirus is listed right here and we have the same set of options of course it just uh, is formatted a little bit differently but we do have two new features and that is anti-theft and SMS call filter now what SMS call filter will do is it will block unknown calls restricted numbers if you want um, and this is very good. Now the anti-theft filter will go ahead and when you enter your security password it will allow you to basically protect your phone and under those circumstances if your phone is stolen you will have a variety of options at your command uh, to do this. What you want to do is set up a trusted friend which would could even be an alternate phone number for yourself and SMS commands to get your phone back. Okay. The anti-theft system works where if someone installs a different SIM card into your phone uh, you'll have the GPS coordinates. Um, you set up a security password to send text commands to your phone if it's lost and this allows you to track your phone. Um, this does not work on tablets that do not support SMS messaging, of course. So that is why we're reviewing the phone app as well. Now, as you see, I have not configured something here, but I will. And I will put my name in here. What we're going to do is put m me and I'm going to put in a phone number that uh, 
I'm not going to list here. And you'll see I have text commands. So I can lock the device. I can siren the device. I can find the device. I can wipe the device. So now I have text commands enabled. If my phone is lost, I can find it. Again, we have the same security audit settings. And we'll turn that on. And we have many new applications we can audit here. I apologize for not having a tripod, but, you know, we have uh, 50 applications tracking our location, 56 reading our identif identity information to varying degrees. But this is basically the phone app. Um, there were no issues found with device monitoring. But you look at this and it's a great application. I recommend it. I think if you're looking for a security suite, uh, ESET currently has the ESET Family Security Pack and this includes licenses for ESET Smart Security, I believe NOD32, as well as ESET Mobile Security and Antivirus, which is what this is. This is obviously is on an Android device. Um, I'm reviewing it simply because I think this is good software. I'm personally running it on my own hardware. I will recommend it to people who have similar hardware. We now live in a multi-platform world. And essentially what that means is that we have multiple devices of different kinds, not simply just Windows. And so I'm excited to present this to you in such a way. Uh, although the quality of the video could probably be a lot better, uh, it is one way of showing it to you uh, without you having to download and go through the trouble of installing it and running it and understanding exactly what it is and what it does.